Maru Bennett. Different territories have different rules, and uh, here in Canada, they've got a very strong uh, stunt union. Uh, so basically, what that means is anything to do with stunts is very serious. They have a union that, that makes sure that everything is done specifically. Now, when it comes down to doing fight sequences in Arrow, as soon as it becomes a fight sequence, a stunt guy steps in. Okay, now sometimes I get to fight against a stunt guy and they'll shoot over his shoulder as though he's Oliver, and I'll do a few things, but I tend to hit people. <laughs> but what, I, what happens, I've got a bit of a reputation for being a bit dangerous with, with my sword and my fighting. Uh, but the stunt guys loved it, but the producers were a bit kind of... <laughs> But it, but it kind of worked. So, so what happened uh, after Spartacus is uh, I was in America. Oh, sorry, I was, I was, in, I was in Kuwait uh, visiting the US military. And, um, and they, because they love the show, you know, I've, I've had so many, you know, amazing soldiers, uh, you know, tell me that, you know, when they were away in service, they'd watch Spartacus and it was an inspiration to them. Uh, but, but, you know, one of the guys showed me how to do this chokehold, right? <laughs> And it was putting, putting your arm around someone's neck and you choke them out. That's what they do in stealth mode when they go into camps and whatnot. And when I went to LA a, a week later, I had the audition for Arrow. <laughs> and I was sitting there and I'm reading it and it says, um, Slade Wilson, you know, it wasn't Slade Wilson, it's was called Holloway, but it was Slade Wilson, drops through the roof of this fuselage, this plane, and grabs Oliver Queen around the throat. And says, you're 10 seconds to tell me something, kid, or I'm gonna cut out your throat box. <laughs> right? And I'm reading this and going, ah, oh, it's that choke hole. <laughs> so I get in there, right? And I want this to be real, right? So I said, can I, can I have the reader come in front of the camera? <laughs> so this guy comes in front of the camera, and I grab him around the neck. This is my audition for Arrow. <laughs> I grab him around the neck and I start doing this scene. I go, kid, you got 10 seconds to tell me something or I'm gonna cut out you. And suddenly this kid, this young guy passed out. <laughs> in my arm and collapsed on the floor. I choked him out. And I went, oh. Uh, is this part of the scene? And the, and the casting director was like, no, no, I think he, I think you choked him out. And so it, we, he sort of came to, you know, it was like, and we sort of picked him up, and the casting director said, go to the bathroom and wash your face. You know? So he went out, and I, I thought I was going to get kicked out of the room. You know? And I went, I'm oh, sorry, man. And he went, no, it was perfect. <laughs> I got Slade Wilson by choking out this reader from a move the Special Forces guy showed me in Kuwait. Slade Wilson is seriously a Special Forces guy. When I arrived at the airport, my manager rang me and said, oh, they've just done a release in like the Hollywood Reporter or something that you've been cast in, in Arrow, check it out. So I'm standing in the immigration line and it said, Manu Bennett cast as Slade Wilson. And I went, and I rang her back and I said, they made a mistake, They're like I'm playing Holloway. Like, this, who's Slade Wilson, Deathstroke? When I said those words, the guy behind the counter, the immigration counter, was like, hey dude, you, you playing Deathstroke? I was like, <laughs> and he went, man, he's badass, man. <laughs> This is comic world, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so that's how much I knew about it when I landed here to start filming him. But you know, look, you know, I met Marv Wolfman, who created Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, 
And he said that I put the humanity into the character that was meant to be in the character. So, you know, I was really proud when he said that to me. Um, that's just my approach to acting, man. I, I just like to throw the kitchen sink at it and put, you know, vulnerability and, and strength and just all these different things that, that I, I find to be just in us all. And I think that's one of the reasons why Crixus and Slade Wilson have stood out. And I'm, I'm not going to brag about it because my life's been painful at times. You know, sometimes when I'm doing this, this, this work that I do, I, I sometimes feel it's very painful for me because I have to go through a lot of stuff to bring the, the acting to the fore. You know, painters have to do it when they get crazy and get naked and start throwing stuff on the walls. You know? <laughs> and musicians go through it when they're playing Mac Maranoff on the piano. You know what I mean? You've got to get into it. And getting into it sometimes is painful. And sometimes I just wish I was working at the zoo in the bird aviary, <laughs> you know, or something. But that's my commitment to it, okay? And so, you know, I, I hope that when you enjoy it, you realize I'm putting my heart into it. So what, when I did that with, with Slade, you know, he said, look, you know, you've given him, you've given him this stuff that I think he's, he's making up. So, so, you know, I, I've, I've got all the comic books now, and I've read extracts of, sort of various comics and whatnot. But, you know, somehow just being human, I think, can make any character work as long as you stay consistent. You know, because the events are what create a character. Environment and, and, and events. And, you know, the, the environment and the events in the television show of Arrow are different to the comic book. You know, it shadows death that causes the rift between Arrow and, and Slade. You know, so I played that with a lot of you know, pain and remorse that her, her death. You know, and that's what drove me into the anger. That's what drove me to putting on a mask, you know, getting an arrow in the eye, <laughs> which I just shot. You're gonna love the finale of this season. It's <laughs> kick ass, really, it's kick ass. You're gonna love it. But yeah, mate, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm now part of the Deathstroke identity and, uh, you know, uh, however it happened, it's happened. And I hope that I, I'm not letting anybody down who follows Deathstroke. It's, it's, look, I mean, you know, I, there's no point giving anything away because it's, it's great to sit in front of that box and get it all first hand, you know. But, you know, the showdown between, you know, Slade and, uh, and Deathstroke is, sorry, Slade and, um, and Oliver is, is the big climax, you know. That's, that's you know, and, and, it's, and it was, it's really impressive. I mean, it's like I was in the studio shooting it at four o'clock in the morning to, two nights ago, and the environment was insane. I mean, what they were doing in order to create all the special effects and all the, you know, the, the incredible sort of uh, stage setting that was going on was just, I mean, I, I, I thought I was in a, in a big budget film, you know. We were all laughing, going like, really, this is television? I mean, we did that in Spartacus as well. Spartacus had some incredible sets, you know, and you're going like, really, this is, this is television? Television's going somewhere else now, you know. I mean, television is actually the new film, it's a, and and what, what I what I love most about it is that you get to, you get so much longer to create a character. You know, it's like cooking. You know, you take your time. You know, I, I, I put it like this: watching a film is like a one-night stand, <laughs> right? Because it's fast, it's over, and you're out of that room. Um, watching a television series is like a marriage. You know, because you're going to be with that person for four years. Five years, you know. <laughs> you know, a funny story. Um, I just shot a scene a few nights ago where I was holding Katie Lotz, the Black Canary, and she had to she had to do the shot. She had to throw something. I'm never going to tell you what it is, but she she had to sort of fling her arm around like this and sort of hit me somewhere, and she missed completely and punched me right in the face <laughs> right here and I mean it was like getting a punch in the face from a guy and it felt like the old you know the old come up and it was yeah yeah it was, it was like Katie turned around she was like oh I'm sorry and Stephen was laughing and was like, <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure that's going to show up on the blooper reel as a matter of fact we had a rap party last night uh, we, we at, the, at the Vancouver room uh, we all celebrated at the end of the season because we finished filming two nights ago. And uh, they had a blooper reel. And uh, I've, I've got this, I've got, I hope it comes out on YouTube. I don't know whether it ever will, but the first time I ever put on the, on the Deathstroke outfit, I, I, I used to do break dancing and, and uh, I did all the, you know, do all the 
the moves. So, so we, we, I just for fun, you know, we got off on the side and we and we shot this bit of footage where I was, uh, I was sort of doing the. I was doing the break dancing in a Deathstroke outfit. <laughs> yeah, it's, on, it's, on, it's on film somewhere. I hope it gets released because it's, it's kind of funny. A couple of hardcore DC fans might go, mm hmm. <laughs>